All right, hey everybody, I'm Jeff Rubenstein from the PlayStation Blog and PlayStation Blogcast, and this is the God of War Ascension PAX panel. So thank you for those of you joining on Twitch TV, and thanks all of you for taking time out for PAX to come out to the Unicorn Theater. At first we didn't think Unicorn Theater was a great fit for Kratos and God of War, but then we, we found that. The sad thing is we did not create that. That was out there on the internet in the wild on its own. That's awesome. <laughs> so let me introduce the, uh, the panel here. Yes. Directly to yes. my right is uh, game director Todd Pappy. You were the, uh, the lead designer on God of War 3. Yep. You are following in the footsteps of, of David Jaffe and Corey yep. Barlog and Stig, but your experience is a lot different and that really affects how God of War Ascension is gonna be. So next up, um, Marianne Krozik. So Marianne, you're the award-winning writer of the God of War series. Uh, Patrick Murphy, you are the principal character artist. I wanna introduce Mark Simon, the lead designer on God of War Ascension. First, let's start off with the story of God of War and going through the days and, well, let's watch this first. And even though Kratos sat on the throne as the new God of War, he was haunted by visions of his family. But the hands of death could not defeat him. The sisters of fate could not control him. And on this day, the man, the legend, Kratos, will have his revenge. When you're putting together, when you're concepting God of War and you know God of War Ascension coming up, where do you start with like these epic moments? We totally want to do this, and then you string the story around it, or how does this all come together? On three, um, we really started talking about set pieces and kind of we knew where we had to start, <laughs> um, and then from there it was kind of figuring out, okay, well, what kind of set pieces do we want to do? And we'd have very, very rough ideas, and Stig and Marianne started wrapping the story around it. Uh, we throw a shit ton of ideas against the, the wall and, and maybe five stick, or we start combining other ones to make a, a big moment. So Marianne, do you come to this team and say, hey, I was reading the Iliad, and this part was like really badass, and how does that come together? Well, on God of War 1, actually, I came in and David had a pretty good framework of what he wanted the game to be, and he had an idea of what he wanted the character to have experienced story-wise, but he didn't have any specifics, so we kind of started filling in those. So from, from my point of view, it was more, it was definitely more about the story than the big moments. So let's talk about Kratos. Uh, where did he come from? What were the early conversations? David, David Jaffe's Jaffe, brainchild? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I really th drilled down on who Kratos is, I just tried to figure out, as a warrior, kind of what's your worst day? It's a, it's a writing exercise where and the worst day is when, as a warrior who kills people, he kills his own people, so. And then it grew from there. Yeah, but why do people like Kratos, do you think? Despite him almost against his own will. For me, the reason he is likable is because we tried to give him a human story. And I think very much the allegory of one and going forward was sort of this idea of amb ambition. It's like, what will you sacrifice to get what you want? And, you know, you're working with guys that are at, at the studio 18 hours a day, and they're really, they're missing time with their family. And they're, there are things that get sacrificed to make these things great. And I think that was sort of an overarching theme. And I think people tune into that. The, the more human side of him. Let's see how Kratos evolved, where he came from and where he is now. <laughs> so this is where it started. Wow. This is a, this is 2002 um, early Kratos design done by Charlie Wen. And I wanted Mark to show this Kratos. stuff because it's really never been, I mean, I have an archive of tons of this old art, but what's cool about it is, is it just shows how much work it takes to really create a new IP. I mean, it took a long time to find him. And, and the white ash that covered him, the ashes of his family, that was later. Um, early on, Jaffe, Charlie was working on a drawing. It was black and white. He was just sketching, and, and Dave's like, that's it, that's it. And Charlie's like, well, I haven't even, I mean, I haven't colored it yet. I haven't really, he's like, no, 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 white. We're doing white. He's got to be white. So then they, everybody went back to a room, and Jaffe and Marianne kind of came up with the whole idea of him being covered in the ashes of his family. And the blue tattoo as well, like it, this is another, I'll show a series of these, but these are also early face <laughs> concepts too. These are ideas, and, and Dave, I can remember hearing stories about Dave walking around to people's desk with a red tattoo and a blue tattoo, and say, which one? He would pick one, and he'd walk, he'd walk away to somebody else, and you'd see him going all over the studio, kind of. So blue was, there's actually demos with him with the blue tattoo, you can see here. But this is early Kratos, and you can see that he was also thinking about the weapon at the same time, um, and that was a huge part of the development of the character was the weapon. 
So yeah, this is the very first demo for God of War. I don't know. If this is, this, ever this been is seen. a yeah. This is this is prototype on this a the, boat. This is the prototype for the game. The first thing. But you'll you'll see a lot of the, you know, awesome. when when they were doing this, it, it was they wanted to to feel kind of high adventure. Animation. Um, and he is on a boat. He is it on always a boat. starts on a boat. Yeah. There certainly are elements of the game as this progresses. You'll see that it's like he's definitely got. See swimming. This is Looks like the dude from Dragon's Lair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You Absolutely. wonder what they were playing. Yeah. Yeah. This is the original final three-quarter concept that Charlie did for God of War One, where they said, "This is it. This is the final guy." Um, and visual continuity kind of that became a problem at the beginning of three, when we could actually finally fully realize him, high res, and and we started looking at all of the different. Kratos is, I mean, God of War 1, God of War 2, they're all pretty low res, and then the cinematics one was super high res, but it was a little different, and trying to figure out kind of, how to boil it down and figure out what really, what are the earmarks of the character. Actually, this is how these rules apply to other IPs. So Finish him. <laughs> Crushed it. I am the god of golf. There's there's a team of key leads that you know review every single thing that kind of goes through. So if it has to do with animation, then it goes to Bruno or one of our key animators. It has to do with combat, then our key combat designers play the game and give feedback. That's what we did on Soul Calibur. That's what we did on MK. It's a, a small village that helps raise him. Let's move on yeah. to God of War Ascension. Go. <laughs> Why did you choose to go back in time and do a prequel? Uh, one word, humanity, and to basically show the human side of Kratos. Um, it was one of the things that you, you never really saw kind of in God of War 2 or God of War 3. Uh, and it, I felt that there was a question that wasn't answered, which was, how does he break free from Ares? Uh, it's not a job that you just go in and say, oh, I quit, you know, I'm out. Um, so that was something that I wanted to tell was, how do, how do you undo selling your soul to the devil? And that's, that's really kind of the genesis of the story. Um, I think at the end of three, uh, Kratos was arguably not a pleasant person to be around, you know? And I think a lot of, I've talked to a lot of people that are kind of, they're like, yeah, I'm playing him, I like him, but I don't remember why I like him. So I think, I think we're going back to that, I remember in, on one, David used to walk around and go, is he an asshole or is he a tortured soul? Like, which one is he? And the answer always, for, to me, was he's both. He's an asshole because he's a tortured soul. And I think we're going to go back to that tortured soul kind of, why he kind of became the asshole that he became. So. so early on, we looked at everything, how he runs, how he jumps, how he climbs on walls. Um, you see some of that stuff in the demo that we have now, the way he climbs on the walls is different. The way he fights is different. And one of the big things that, like, you try to tell somebody and they're just like, yeah, that sounds cool, but until you play it, you don't really know what the heck we're talking about. Um, but this game, we're able, we've got our engine done now. You know, We don't have to redo the engine. We don't have to redo a lot of that tech now. So we, we have that luxury where we can look at our design elements and go, man, make it, let's make it awesome. So previous Gods of War games, critical and commercial success is all single player. So why multiplayer? Um, well, the genesis of the idea came, came about uh, when we were finishing up God of War 3. Uh, we have a challenge arena where it's Kratos versus Kratos, or soul version of him, and Adam Poole, our, our lead combat designer in three, he got, he got Kratos so you could fight against each other, and that's kind of where it was, oh shit, we can do this. Who are the big bads in God of War Ascension? We're about to find out. In the time before the Titans, before the gods of Olympus, a great battle was waged, and from this rage, this madness of war, the Furies were brought forth. The Furies were bound to no one, for the Furies sought retribution only for those they deemed guilty.
ascension. Th that is Megara. So she's one of the three Furies. Uh, you see, you saw silhouettes of the three Furies at the end, um, but. She uh, would be basically the enforcer. The whole idea behind her is um, that she's got these, these, these growths coming out of her back and she can kind of walk around Doc Ock style um, and she can obviously impale people with that. Um, but she is a grappler. She wants to get her hands on you, beat the shit out of you. Why, why are they opposing Kratos? Like, who exactly well, it's, it's, it's again, they, they hold the bond to his, you know, basically when you... When you sell your soul, you know, they hold that bond and they say, okay, you know, you break it, we're going to drive you insane, we're going to bring you down, kind of thing. And like a freak show collections agency? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, that's, that's basically what they do. They're, they hunt you down, they drive you mad. And yeah. Let's give it up now for Todd, Marianne, Patrick, and Mark, your God of War Ascension leads. Thank you guys for coming. PlayStation.